come once again to discuss things. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I am Sid Part 2. Joining me today is... Me? Yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so anticlimactic every time. Um, you get me to be on this show with you, what do you expect? Anticlimactic, yeah. Just like your love life. Bam! Exactly! Oh. Anyway, speaking of people with with horrific love lives let's talk about the the last jedi luke skywalker um so this is well no no no. he will not be the last jedi he'll be the last jedi that was actually a jedi <laughs> let me put Fair. it that way uh Fair. you know this this could be a weird one because you know i've already done a review of the last jedi and so to talk about just luke skywalker's character is going to be intriguing because i don't want it to turn into a review of the last jedi <laughs> see that, that's the thing about it is in part i wanted to talk about it luke skywalker in particular from from like the perspective of who we understand luke skywalker is as far as continuity tells us which would just be these new movies in the original trilogy and who we understand luke skywalker is from the decades of expanded universe because the troubling thing about star wars is the thing that kept it alive, the EU, is no longer there. Mm-hmm. And the way Star Wars has been produced in between the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy always assumed the existence of the EU. Like, the prequels have their own mess of problems, but those things were fucking written to be complemented by all of the novels and comics. Clone Wars, as much as it breaks continuity, is built around all these comics and novels and stuff that take place in it. They make a lot of that live action. There's all these like reveals and twists and stuff that are coming from the EU. And now that all of that's gone, it kind of makes you wonder how much of Luke Skywalker is in the stuff that counts as canon versus how much of the stuff isn't in canon. And I'm convinced part of the reason a lot of people don't like Last Jedi through no fault of their own is because Star Wars has for decades now only been produced to complement the idea of an expanding universe. So whether or not you realize it, everything you've seen up to this point in Star Wars has kind of been built around that notion of everything has an answer and a side story. Yeah. And that doesn't exist anymore. It does kind of, but nowhere near to the extent it used to. Yeah, I mean, Marvel and and all the novels are now putting out their their new canon stuff that's filling in all the gaps for us and stuff. And, And it's interesting to look at that junk because I, I i didn't want to say stuff again it's interesting to look at that junk because you know they're they're kind of like you could tell their hands are tied because they can't reveal stuff like you know i'm sure aftermath or whatever kind of gave you a slight more background on snoke but nothing could go into snoke because you needed the the speculation around him for the subversion of the last jedi to work um, and see, that's the other thing about the new canon is that like people will will rebut and say, well, there is new EU. It's just on all the comics and novels and stuff. But like, the big difference between what the way we're doing stuff now versus the way we used to, like you said, is that they they don't have a lot of material. And honestly, a lot of that stuff you can kind of like play around with and get a little more emotional nuance. But it's not the EU it used to be. It's not like, here is a novel that picks up directly after Force Awakens ends, and here's all the adventures these characters went on in between movies. It really isn't doing that. Yeah, and and they can't, because now that we're actually making new movies, Star Wars is a film franchise first, and the films have to be the thing that matters the most. Um, Yep, even Rebels. Even all the stuff Rebels is doing, it's so inconsequential to the new continuity. As far as I'm concerned, you don't need to read or watch anything. Yeah, yeah. In a way, with the prequels and Clone Wars, you kind of wanted to and were expected to. Mm -hmm. Like, Episode 3 is a lot better to watch after you've seen, after you've read Darth Plagueis, and they knew that. Yeah, I'd I'd agree with that. But anyway, uh, to, to focus just on Luke Skywalker. So... The the thing I always found interesting about Luke, and the reason Luke is my favorite character from 
from all of Star Wars and in particular the original trilogy has a lot to do with um with the emotional journey that he goes on. Now, I, let me let me put a small caveat. Favorite light side character has a lot to do with the the classic uh, archetypal hero's journey and and the emotions that that go along with it. And you know you kind of see yourself as Luke, and and so it's really easy to get invested in that. And that might also play a role into why people were so you know polarized on the end of the last or on the reveal for what Luke's been doing since the Last Jedi. You know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to be said for who Luke was and why. Because the the original trilogy is, no matter how good it is, it is a two-dimensional story. And it knows that. And it wants to be that. And it doesn't pretend like it's anything more. And giving Luke a third dimension is going to necessarily compromise what people thought he was. Mm -hmm. Because... And even the the expanded universe did this. Like, we, we tend to forget and act like it didn't happen... But there's a shit ton of stuff. Like, if you went back to the old days when people were reading the, the Throne trilogy the first time and Mara Jade first showed up, people were in, up in arms about the fact that Luke and Mara Jade got together. Mm-hmm. And then Lucas came around and fucked that all up with the fucking Jedi or celibate shit. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, just, here, let me just uh, throw a wrench in this gear for you. Um, anyway... <laughs> So yeah, Luke is a character that I've always loved, but for me, what what made his his turn work so well in Last Jedi was not that like he'd given up hope because Luke is you know obviously a new hope. It was that he'd given up because he couldn't live up to what he thought he should be, and I really really enjoyed that. You know, yeah. Part of what I like is. The expanded universe, as as it was coming out, gave all of these like excruciating levels of detail of how much Luke was doing. And with Last Jedi, none of that exists anymore. And so the last time we saw Luke, he defeated the Empire and lost his dad. And now he's just left alone in the galaxy to fight the remnants of the Empire. And at some and like you don't see any of that, but the whole casualty of war thing really falls into who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you, you got to imagine, a lot of people with the way that movie plays thought Luke Skywalker was the reason the Empire fell, and that even even as far as factually, that is not true. It's just symbolically what it looked like. Yeah, and I really like really that really whole idea. If if, uh, if Luke had killed or if Vader had killed the Emperor on the Death Star, because could he really have gotten out? <laughs> fair point exactly so like the whole legend of luke skywalker thing playing into last Jedi, i really like but also i never thought luke was particularly a great teacher and i don't think it makes sense to make him a good teacher because he he has his own jedi school and stuff and there's a whole jedi prince books and all that and luke's like order of the jedi and they're all cool but i always thought they kind of mischaracterized luke as having profoundly way more knowledge than there is any way possible for him to have after all of that, those events happen. Because as far, as far as that universe is concerned, he's basically the last Jedi. And there's not a lot of, like, ceremony or instruction or, like, there's all of these fourth powers and shit that just have to be lost to history because everyone's dead. Mm-hmm. And so Luke being either a failed teacher or a teacher that is retired makes a lot more sense than master of a new Jedi order until his dying breath. Yeah, and see, for me, like, I I remember getting into Star Wars at a certain point after high school and, like, thinking about looking into a lot of the Expanded Universe stuff, and then I just heard certain details about it, and for whatever reason, it, fa- it sounded profoundly uninteresting. Like, from what I remember, I heard, like, the old EU Luke was basically capable of any Force feat, and that just yep. didn't intrigue me at all, because... We already saw Jedi that were capable of any feat with the Force. And I don't know, like, that that's not what I wanted Luke to be. Um, yeah. Like, I'd never wanted Luke to be the most powerful, the greatest Jedi that there ever was. I like, you know, part of the, his whole thing is, is the story of, like, this freaking kid out in the middle of the boonies in the middle of nowhere who, you know, kind of becomes part of the galactic story that's that is his claim to greatness he doesn't need to be greater than that for me yeah i agree i mean there there came a really quick point where like 
they gave him Force Lightning and everything just because they thought it'd be cool if Luke was the Jedi Master that had all of the powers and understood how all of the Force stuff worked. And I don't know, even in episode, even in episode six, like I feel like for the most part he plays and he comes off as like pretending like he's cooler and wiser than he is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I guess maybe the EU just kind of ran with that facade he was putting on, and the Last Jedi knew it was a facade, and I really liked that. I don't know if I'd say it was a facade, because, like, I feel like he learned quite a bit, but he was still very underconfident in himself, which is why he goes back to Dagobah. Um, yeah. And and I found that really interesting about him. Um, so much about what, what makes Luke interesting is, is his relation to other characters. Like, it's interesting... Excuse me. It's interesting to see Luke as a student. It's interesting to see what, what effect Luke has on Darth Vader. Um... It's interesting to see what effect Luke has on Han Solo. Um, yeah. And and now in the new trilogy, it's interesting to see what effect Luke has on Kylo Ren and Rey and, and Leia. Yeah, I agree. Um, Luke's one of those characters that I always really appreciated in Star Wars, but he never really seemed... He was never the character like I, I personally related to or looked up to in that way. Because um, I, I feel like... Luke is played very pure and very simple and very down to earth in the original trilogy, and that's part of the appeal. But I always part of why I like Kylo Ren as much as I do is because he's so muddy and gray, and like his whole characterization is that he has no idea who the fuck he is. Mm-hmm. Um, and Luke has bits. He's a hero of that. for the millennial generation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. He's a whiny man child that has no idea what he's doing and is angry at everything. I love it. Um, but Luke Luke never really had that, and Luke shouldn't have had that. I feel like all of Luke's insecurities have to come in from the fact that he has enormous power. Mm-hmm. And that's cool, and that does a lot of, and a lot of stuff, but... When Luke dies in the original EU, when he's like showing up as a force go decayed Skywalker and all that, and all of the legacy stuff... He just came off as profoundly unluke to me. Like it felt like they were just writing Yoda, except he didn't have backward speak. Okay. Yeah, and see that that's just not appealing to me. There is something like wonderfully perfect about the way Luke comes off. Just like ignoring the the um, change from what we expect Luke's character to be—the guy who never gives up hope in anybody. Um, there's something wonderful in like the kind of sarcastic jokiness that that he yeah. has in Last Jedi. Like I talked about how I a lot of the comedy doesn't work for me. The more I think about it, like man, there's some really Luke lines in that. Like I I, I think particularly about like his bickering with Han, and a lot of that really starts to work a lot better for me. Um, yeah. Like the scene that I've thought more and more about, and that's that's really started to get very emotional for me, is his scene with R two, um, and like, oh my god, yeah, R two plays the Leia hologram, and he's like, "That's a low or what? That's a dirty move or something." And I'm like, "God, that is such a good line." The more I think about it, um, I I love his reaction because I don't particularly think Mark Hamill's a good actor, which we've talked about before, but he plays it up so well in that scene when he's just looking at that hologram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, oh, I, I love that. I love the way he speaks to R2, where he's like, watch your language, we're on a sacred temple. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. <laughs> and then even, like, because it, it, we talked about this, too, but, like, when all the lasers are firing on him, and then the dust clears, and he just, like, wipes off the dust from his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And on a second viewing, you know it's a hologram, so he's just being pompous and a dick about it at that point. Yeah, the whole force projection thing was something I really liked, uh, but but again, not not focusing on the Last yeah, Jedi. Yeah. So, but like, but but sorry, to focus on the Last Jedi, let's talk about this because I this is a critique where I don't agree with it, but this is the one where I think I understand the most where people are coming from, because if you look at the original trilogy, Luke's character arc is is he going to turn to the dark side? No, because he is hope. He is the embodiment of hope in the universe, and he shows that anyone can be saved even the most hated man in the galaxy darth vader um so i find that that really interesting and and a a complaint i've heard people lobby against where luke's character goes is that he has given up on someone he has written someone off and that is contrary to who his character is see and 
I don't know if I agree with that interpretation. I don't think he's given up on Kylo Ren. I think he gave up on himself. Mm -hmm. I think that those are profoundly different. Like, I don't think Luke is unaware of the conflict and issues Kylo has, and I don't think he's discounting the fact that Kylo can be saved. I think he's discounting his ability to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's And I think that makes so much more sense for the... For the whole idea that he is this guy with all of this power and no guidance whatsoever and he has to be a teacher. And up until that point, he hadn't failed. So he just kept winging it and got and built his Jedi Masterhood on this house of cards that wasn't going to last. And then it busted. And then suddenly he failed for the, for the most profound way. And now he has no idea how to get back because he doesn't have any, anyone to teach him like everyone else did. Mm-hmm. And then Yoda shows up and teaches him. Yeah, yeah. I think that makes a lot more sense because I don't, I don't, I don't see Luke as giving up on Kylo in any way in that movie. I think it's just entirely built up on the idea that he doesn't know what to do at this point. That the Empire was defeated, the First Order is here. It's his fault that Kylo Ren became Kylo Ren. He just doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's that's an interesting interpretation, um, and that could serve toward his character arc of like, not giving up hope in, in people, but losing hope in himself. I could see that. Um, and, and again, I, I think the, the moment where he loses hope in himself isn't an external force, it's the internal thing. It's it's the exact same thing as that turn toward the Emperor to grab the lightsaber when he starts fighting his father. Um, and it's just, it's that exact same moment, and he recognizes it in, in himself, and then he immediately pays the price for it, and is just filled with disgust again. Yeah. Um, There is even a point in the old EU where Luke isn't in charge of the Jedi Temple anymore and he gets exiled. Interesting. So in in the big difference between that and the exile he has in in Last Jedi is in that one he's doing it as more of a grandiose jester as the morally correct Jedi Grandmaster is telling you what's right. He doesn't agree with the, the government on Coruscant. He does, I don't remember the details of it. It's been a long-ass time since I've read all that stuff. But, like, essentially, um, he's getting blamed for one of the Solo kids becoming um, a Sith. And Luke's got issues with the way the New Republic is running. So he doesn't want any of his Jedi on Coruscant. So the president or the leader or the senator or whoever, whoever is in charge of Coruscant uh, is like, fine, if you won't give us Jedi, we'll just arrest you. And Luke's like, now nah, just leave. Hmm. And, like, he just becomes a weird martyrdom, and it's a lot more grandiose and and maybe heroic in some sense than what he than his exile in Last Jedi. But that's the other thing, is that people really hang on to that notion of Luke did everything right, even if everything around him went wrong, in a way he doesn't in Last Jedi. Yeah. Um, and I just, I never saw Luke as a character as doing everything right, so. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where, like, he... He's got kind of that young idealism kind of thing in the original trilogy. Because, like, well, Mark Hamill is 18, 19 when he started playing Luke Skywalker. Um, and, you know, we're talking not... It's not the hippie era anymore, but the whole don't trust anyone over 30 thing is still very yeah. much around. Um, there's there's a lot of, like, the youth in rebellion and and uh, the the notion of... How to put this notion of of uh saving the day and and just a lot of optimism to the original luke skywalker character arc and you know last jedi takes a turn with that and tells a story that's much more about the the kinds of problems we're having um now in in a similar way that uh that the original star wars kind of uh reflected certain problems that we were having then yeah, I agree. Um, do you feel like... Because Luke is very clearly indoctrinated into a Jedi. He wants to be a Jedi. He's never going to not be a Jedi, even in Last Jedi and the EU, even when he's in exile. He believes very heavily in what the Jedi are. Um, do you feel like that makes enough sense? Um, do you feel like Luke should have at some point... After, especially after understanding everything about the Jedi Order because of the prequel trilogy, um, which is hinted at a little bit in, in Last Jedi, but not as overtly, do you think it makes sense for Luke to like want to make a new Jedi school? Um, 
Yeah. Because the thing is, it makes perfect sense after you watch the prequels, or after you watch the original trilogy. After you watch the prequels, in my head, it just... I feel like in my head, if anyone was going to go out of their way to research who the Jedi were after that is canon, there's no way you'd want to start another Jedi Order. At least not in the same vein. And and that's the thing, is like, we don't know exactly what the Order... Like, what differences his Order was going to have compared to the old Order, right? And... And maybe... Well, not even necessarily in the sequel trilogy, but even in the EU, where, like, the EU, surely ex- a lot of that existed before prequel trilogy, but then even after prequel trilogy, we were doing a lot of stuff with Luke as a Jedi Master, and I just don't know how much of it gels after those movies. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, for me, it's just, like, it depends on what he's keeping, what he's getting rid of, because, you know, we talk about the whole balance of the Force thing, and the Jedi are hypocrites, because they don't want the for- Force in balance, they want the light to completely rule and for the darkness to be stamped out. And the Sith are are at least honest. They want to rule over the Force. Um, So, like, the Jedi are are hypocritical for balance with Force. So if Luke was to found an order that called itself Jedi, that was in, that shared some of the traditions of the Jedi Order of, like, fighting for good, but not, like, stamping out um, a natural part of, of existence then that could work. It's just, I don't know if that's what Luke was doing in any continuity. Yeah. Um, I yeah. like my, my person, like, I don't know if that's what Luke was doing in the EU. I can tell you that's not what Luke was doing in the sequel trilogy or the, the distance between sequel trilogy and the original trilogy, because the force snapped back on his ass in the form of Kylo Ren. And yeah. then Kylo and Snoke kind of went over and they were enforcing too much control over the force in the galaxy because Luke wasn't using the light side. So the force snapped back on their ass and that's why we get Rey. Um, hence the awakening. Um, yeah. So it's just the matter of like, what does it mean for the force to be in balance? And no, it doesn't mean equally using the light side and the dark side. It doesn't mean like, you know, saving somebody with force lightning. <laughs> um, but yeah. it, it does, it does have to mean not, not being repressed the way the Jedi were. Uh, and so, as I said at the, the top of the episode, Luke is the last Jedi. Because they may call Rey a Jedi, because that just seems to be the general term that the galaxy uses. But whatever she does, it seems like it's inherently going to be very different than, than what Luke and the Jedi were doing. That, yeah, okay, I agree with that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Luke is... Luke's in that weird precarious position where it's really cool and it's really inspiring that he sets up his own Jedi Order and he can alter however he's going to do, however he's going to teach them or what he's going to teach them or how the Jedi Order operates. But it is kind of an enormous task for this one swamp kid who's like er, late teens, early 20s when he first becomes a Jedi, Mm -hmm. having to learn all of this stuff on his own and then restart this entire order somehow. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it's, it's cool, but it's also two dimensional and the more dimensions you add to it, the more that premise has to break down somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know about you, but when I was 20 and I started my own religion, it did not go swimmingly. Um, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you gotta print all these books. You gotta get all, you gotta trick all you these gotta, people. You gotta with- hand out like more pamphlets. You just, you, you need a lot of pamphlets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and- Giving everyone a laser sword at graduation is just not economically feasible. I'm sorry. You know, I gotta send you this cracked uh, parody series they did of Star Wars, and he's like, okay, so the first rule for Jedi school is safety. Matter of fact, the first six years are all about safety, because you're carrying around a laser sword. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, true. Yeah, Um, yeah. So, when I picked Luke, I kind of figured we'd talk a lot about Last Jedi, and I feel like the less I have to say, the more it just kind of confirms me that, like, yeah, Luke's not a very deep character. Oh, no, None of the original trilogy characters really are. No, they're not. They're, they are archetypes, but that's the thing that makes them... Exactly. That's, that's the thing that, like, attaches you to them so much, and, and I was talking about this in the live show last week, uh, breaking the time-space continuum last night. I was talking about this in the live show with, with people, I'm like... Yeah, a lot of whether or not you'll like Star Wars depends on the age at which you watch them. Like, I feel like everyone should watch the original trilogy just because those are such important cultural monuments. 
But if you don't watch the original trilogy until you're, like, in your late teens, 20s, you're probably never going to like Star Wars. Um, no, yeah, it's absolutely... It's it's too black and white. It's too simplistic. It's too two-dimensional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're... And it's it's hard to get into. You need that, that investment where you're not thinking about those deeper levels when you're a kid. And it makes perfect sense for the universe, right? Like... I even if you don't enjoy Star Wars because you watched it late, the movies still work on a fundamental level because of how two day they are and how all the archetypes are playing with each other and how Lucas managed to get an entire universe off the ground just by pulling from different referential material from all over. Mm-hmm. And that's impressive and cool. It's just it's not deep. Yeah. It never was. And that's okay. Yeah, and then there's, of course, people who just aren't going to be into that kind of thing. And and I get that. Um, yeah. And, and that's what, like, you know, it's hard to talk about Luke as a really complex character because he's not. But he's still a character that's close and, and near and dear to my heart, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, like, I get Luke moved, is inspiring. Yeah, I get moved to the verge of tears every time I see that moment where he defeats Darth Vader and then turns off his lightsaber, throws it to the side, and stands up to the Emperor and says... I am like, I am a Jedi as my father before me. And the yeah. Emperor looks at him and goes, then die, Jedi. And that's that's really, really emotional, impactful stuff, but that doesn't mean it's complex. It's yeah. the shiny knight saying, No, sorcerer, you will not turn me. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean it there there's a reason it gives us an impact. It's because of those archetypes are necessary and helpful and they they allow you to apprehend a certain kind of suffering and satisfy a certain kind of suffering. And it's good and it's, it's helpful. But anytime you want to talk about Luke as anything deeper than that, you're going to risk alienating people because the more dimensions you add, the more specific it gets and the less relatable he is to a general population. Mm -hmm. Like grandmaster Jedi Luke Skywalker is not something everyone wants to read. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of and agree. In the same way, Last Jedi Luke Skywalker is not a thing everyone wants to read or see. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I can understand why people, particularly because, again, so much about what we identify with Luke is about um, the way in which we we feel connected to him from that very young age. Because, again, if you're like Star Wars, it's I'm not saying that no one could watch Star Wars for the first time in their 20s and fall in love with it, but it's exceptionally rare. I think it. Um, it re- it's a power rangers thing except power rangers is harder to stomach as you get older yeah yeah no but so like for for having that emotional connection to this character and then seeing him broken down and you know just seeing your hero's age is weird um but no absolutely but like seeing having this huge emotional connection to this character and then seeing him be so different and adding dimensions to him that's a hard thing for people to swallow, so I can understand why people were were very upset by The Last Jedi. Um, so, though that doesn't make it bad. And I, I'm sure this is going to be brought up if we don't bring it up now. Um, it's kind of the elephant in the room when it comes to this. I don't think it particularly matters, but people keep using it in, in conversation, so maybe we should at least address it a little bit. Um, Mark Hamill's back-and-forth statements about whether or not Luke is in character. Okay, here's, here's what I'm going to say. Okay. If Mark Hamill loved everything about what they did with Luke's character in The Last Jedi, cool, great. If Mark Hamill hated everything they did with Luke's character in The Last Jedi and he said he just did it for a paycheck, cool, great. I don't care what Mark Hamill's opinion is. I care what my opinion is. I care what your opinion is. Quit trying to justify your take by looking at other people like they fucking matter. This just reminds me of one of the very first arguments I ever got into on the internet with someone where they were trying to convince me that Tim Burton's Batman 89 was the superior Batman film to Begins in the Dark Knight because Bob Kane said it was his Batman. I don't give a fuck. Who said what? I give a fuck what you think. Yep, I agree. (laughs) Um, I agree. Ultimately, no matter, and people do this all the time whenever stuff like this happens, right? Like when when Nolan says that his Batman we shouldn't be read as political, or any actor or any director comes out and explains something, just because you made it, does that does not give your interpretation of it more privilege than anyone else's? The author is dead. Um. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. (laughs) So. 
Mark Hamill does not have the authority on who Lex Skywalker is. He just played the guy. Yeah. Um, and, like, I mean, certainly he has a, a level of insight because he got into the character's head, but then that means he got into that same character's head to play him in The Last Jedi. So yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? And even then, that's not a remarkable feat. If you want to get into Luke Skywalker's head, try to write a paragraph as if you were Luke Skywalker. Done. It's not special. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Is, is there anything else we want to talk about with Luke? So, okay. Um, one thing I am kind of disappointed on um, is we never get to see Han, Leia, and Luke together I'm in the sequel trilogy. For, I'm holding out hope for Force Ghosts. No, I know, and that, that'd be cool. Leia, at the very least, it should get one at this point. I'm not sure so sure about Han, but, like, I, I want to see those three actors together because no matter how divergent and bizarre and, and problematic the EU got, there were always, like, these weird checkoff moments at the end of, like, really big wars and story arcs where Han, Luke, and Leia were just sitting together, mm-hmm. and I missed that. Yeah, uh, that you know, you you miss your your family space portrait, right? Like every exactly. every movie of the original trilogy ended with family space portrait, and this you, you just haven't gotten that. Uh, you know, Force Awakens ends with the um, with the Ray holding the lightsaber. Uh, Last Jedi ends with the kid, and like those are iconic in their own way, but they're not family space portraits, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. And, of course, the EU has that longer problem of they're never going to kill any of those three big characters as long as they can keep making them older and putting them through more stories. And Last Jedi and Force Awakens do. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's an even enough trade-off in my mind, but at the very... Even in a flashback, I would have killed for just a flashback or something of, like... Like, when Luke walks into the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, I would have killed for just, like, he, like, hallucinates Han and Leia sitting there next to him or something. That'd be cool. Like, honestly, I would, you know, I'm sure they got something of Carrie Fisher on a green screen. I mean, obviously, with the, the Force pull. At this point in her career, you don't think they have backstock footage of her on green screen? Well, no, I'm talking about, like, from Last Jedi. I'm sure they got something of her just standing on a green screen, like, probably in between takes, like, smiling or something. So that would be enough for Force Ghost. If fucking Anakin can come back as a Force Ghost, like, I've been so annoyed with the fanboys bitching about levels of training because Luke got one lecture on how the Force worked and on Hoth was able to fucking Force pull a lightsaber and fucking Anakin doesn't even know that Force Ghosts are a thing, yet he gets to manifest just so he can get a goddamn smiling moment. So fuck that noise. (laughs) If fucking Anakin can come back as a Force Ghost, why the fuck... But can't Leia and Han come back as Force Ghosts? <laughs> True. True. At the very least, Leia. Leia has clearly, in the EU and uh, in another version, she's clearly at the very least had conversations with Luke about the Force and believes in it way more than Han. I mean, she's she's very Force-sensitive in, in Force Awakens. That That's one of the things that like did not surprise me that we saw her use the Force in... Um, Last Jedi. I, I would have thought it wouldn't be as dramatic as that, but I guess if you're going to go, go big. Um, that scene is still one of my only big problems with that movie. We're like, see, I don't care if she can use the Force to pull herself. I just care that she didn't, like, blow up in the vacuum of space first. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's all I'm saying. It, it is a weird one. That, that, but anyway, uh, Luke Skywalker. Uh, what do we have for recommendations for Luke Skywalker? Um... I'm going to go with uh, Return of the Jedi, particularly the the fight with Darth Vader in the Emperor's Throne Room, still my favorite scene in in all of Star Wars. Um, And then Last Jedi, and I also kind of enjoy some of what Jason Aaron was doing with Luke. Uh, Showdown on Smuggler's Moon in the new EU comics was kind of fun. Yeah. Um, So outside of movies... um... Thrawn Trilogy does a lot of cool stuff with Luke, and that's where you first get Mary Jane, and that's that's always a lot of fun, and I like her as a character a lot, particularly in contrast to Luke, um, because she's basically female Han Solo in a lot of ways, except Jedi powers, okay. or Force powers, that is. Um, Star Wars, Legacy of the Force is where a lot of the stuff from the new movies gets pulled, and I think isn't done quite as well, but it's still a lot of fun, interesting drama. Um, and then... I don't remember what books this is in, 
But there's a thing called the Swarm War where Luke becomes a Jedi Grandmaster and um, like has his school and has like all these political problems with the New Republic. And that stuff's really good. Okay. I so that's about it. it. I could see it. And then Last Jedi, because Last Jedi is the best Luke. <laughs> oh, shit. Gauntlet thrown. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, who are we going to talk about next time? Um, hmm. All right, this will be interesting. Let's talk about Alfred Pennyworth. Oh, boy. Yeah. One fake British accents for that one. Just the whole podcast? Just really, yeah, really yeah. bad fake British accents? Yes. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> you know there are people I immediately who... regret that idea. <laughs> you know there are people who are disappointed now. I know. I suck. I'm uh, sorry. All right. Anyway, everyone, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I'm the Philosopher. And I'm the Exile. And we are your geeky gentlemen. And we will be discussing things.